So when you're assessing, when you're assessing a hip, first of all, we always talk about finding something wrong. But the most important thing as a manual therapist is not only being able to find something wrong, but to be able to understand when you find something right. In other words, you have to have a very good understanding as to what it is that a perfect hip will do before you can understand whether or not it's biomechanically dysfunctional. Now, if somebody has a pain problem, it's very, very easy because you just go for the pain area and you try to locate the problem that's causing the pain. But if you're trying to assess the mechanics of the pelvis, you have to understand what perfect mechanics would be and you have to understand what a target goal is for the mobility and movement of that hip, of those hips in order to understand when something's gone wrong. But here's a good example of assessment of a particular joint that you can take this concept to any joint in the body. If I'm assessing his hip joint, one of the things that I like to look for is <coughs> from here, if he brings his hip out, I want to be able to see that he is able to actively, without my help, actively bring his knee all the way down to the ground or down to the table without that, interior, that internal transition, transition or anterior movement of that ASIS. So you can see with him, if he's square, keep your foot just like that, now just try to bring it all the way out. You can see he's not that bad, okay? Now I want him to follow my hand, so keep the knee as far down as you can, follow my hand this way. Now what happens when I start to come up here, is you start to see the knee is raising. In an optimal hip, I want him to be able to hold all the way down to the ground, which in his case would be problematic, right up as high as he can. Now you see that you see now you're starting to see the real deficit. I'm doing this passively, but like I've always said, I don't care about passive ranges of motion. They don't do anything for function. I care that he can do it actively, but I'm just trying to demonstrate this for you. I want him to be able to get as high as he possibly can this way without any translation. Be able to bring his knee all the way up and across and cross the midline without getting any posterior rotation of that pelvis. Okay, that's one of the, the things that I want to do to screen. <clears throat> now, let's say that he has this problem where his hip cannot come all the way out. People would be very tempted to say that that means you need to stretch your groin. Okay? However, if I block that motion and I push him all the way out, I'm going to ask him, where do you feel restriction? Do you feel it on here or do you feel it on here? Okay, so he's starting to feel it more on your groin. That doesn't mean that you can assume that that's what's going to happen because in many cases, when I challenge him into flexion and abduction, the person will not describe groin pain. They'll describe pain on the contralateral aspect of the joint. Now, if I use my hand and I do my tissue tension technique, I could have told him where he was going to feel this restriction. Because when I go in this direction, I start to feel some aberrant tension come into my hand right about here. So I know that right in that spot is where I'm starting to feel that aberrant tension or that force which is limiting the proper, efficient movement from occurring. However, if I get to the end range where the restriction occurs and I do not palpate tissue tension in his adductors, that is automatically going to trigger something in my mind. If the adductors are not the end point of this movement, then what is happening? If I start to challenge and he starts to tell me that it's the posterior aspect of the joint, well now I know that the main problem that he has is not flexibility or mobility in the adductor area, it's probably a capsular.